So after all this passcode fiasco, uh, and, and, and again, congratulations to those of you who figured it all out, but welcome to Zoom Seekers for May, uh, now that we have Chamber Day behind us. And I won't start pitching you on Chamber Day 2024 until March 1st of 2024. So tonight we're going to do first of two arts, what I call the artsy fartsy uh, Zoom Seekers. Um, you know, one of the challenges of putting these all together uh, is I try to not do the same round of speakers. And I mean, I'm part of that group of same old, same old speakers that goes around and talks at every dive club. So the neat thing about doing this as a, a Zoom-based thing is we can get people from all over the world and we can get people uh, who you normally wouldn't get maybe uh, talking at a dive club. So uh, tonight we're going all the way out to Alhambra, which on the other side of Pasadena, in case you didn't know. Um, and and we're going to go into the 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 workplace and the studio and the mind of uh, Stephen Holman. And, and, and Stephen is an artist. Um, if you're at Chamber Evening, you saw his work, Spanish Shawl, was one of our raffle prizes. And last year, I don't remember the title of the one last year, Stephen, but, but one of the ones was a blind bid. And he will be talking about, too, he'll be actually exhibiting at the Scuba Show. He has, he'll have a booth there. Um, but the point is, he's really gotten into sort of underwater art. Not that he's painting things underwater, but that underwater images inspire him. So he is our speaker tonight, and he's going to enthrall you with uh, all the ins and outs of what makes his brain tick and what inspires him and how and why he does what he does. So please give a big Zoom Seekers welcome to Stephen Holman. That's our traditional thing since we have everybody muted. Stephen, all you. All right. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, okay. Well, I'll give you a little bit of uh, uh, background. You know, I'll try and keep it as short as possible, but on, you know, where I come from and why I got into all this. Um, yeah, I'm an artist who's made my living from art in one way or another for the last 40 years, I guess. I'm, I, I just turned 60 and I've been doing, you know, one kind of art or another since I was 20, you know, yeah, 20 or so. I came to, I, I, I was born in England. I grew up in a, a a small fishing town called Hastings on the south coast of England. Not very good for diving, um, as most of England is not the greatest diving. But I did, you know, grow up uh, pretty obsessed with fish. You know, Jacques Cousteau was on TV around those times. I was all, I all, I dreamt about, I had fish dreams for, until I learned to dive, I dreamt fish. I had reoccurring dreams about fish. So I'm sure that's it's something to do with why I'm now painting them. But um, um, yeah, I came to America when I, and, uh, when I was 21. And uh, then uh, after a few years in New York, I ended up on the West Coast in Los Angeles. I lived in, uh, San Francisco for most of the 90s. And I learned to dive in, you know, 20 years ago in Monterey. So you know, half my dives have been up there. I love the Monterey area. That's pretty great. I also love cold water diving. I mean, I love California diving. I've been around the world a little bit, you know, a few, but I honestly, I I think I'm always, I've been very uh, inspired and influenced definitely with the paintings, particularly in our with our local you know, locations with the diving and the cult forests and so forth. So what I'm going to show you is very much, um, and I think it makes my paints and my stuff, which I'll show you in a second, uh, you know, a little more unique because so many painters who do do underwater paintings, it's, uh, you know, it's either tropical or it's, it's certainly areas that are, you know, the, the visibility is perfect. <laughs> Whereas here, you know, I'm grappling with, if, I, if you're doing California underwater landscapes, you you know, there's not too many times we go down there and it's fantastic visibility for 50 feet, you know, it's, uh, it's so I'm kind of, I'll get into that when I start showing you the stuff. But anyway, that's where I come from. Oh, and the, in the, the, my, I haven't been painting the entire time. I've been making my living as a painter for the last it's probably been like around 12, 15 years now. But before that, I was in, I directed and created animation series for Disney and Nickelodeon and stuff like that. And I used to do uh, underground theater. So I've got, you know, different art forms throughout my life. But these days I really, I teach, teach art and I'm, I'm, paint, I'm a painter. So I make my living from that. All right. So that's me. Anyone, if anyone wants to ask any questions at any point in all of this rambling, feel free to go ahead. Um, but I'm going to start showing you some stuff. 
Um, I think, let's see, I'll, start, I'll share the screen here. Hope that works. That one. There we go. Can you see that okay? Is yeah, that you're good. Great. Okay. I'm going to show you a bit of the TV stuff, actually, just to sort of show you that um, this, uh, you know, what I meant, you know, the, my paintings didn't come out of, I've been kind of interested in the underwater world even before I was diving. This this stuff is, uh, when was this, 90s, um, Nickelodeon. This was, uh, so I create. this was a series called Danny in Bubble World. I'm not going to spend too long on this stuff, but it just kind of gives you an interesting background, hopefully. This was a, so these these were characters in walk around suits, and the whole thing was an underwater fantasy world with a real little boy in an underwater world called Bubble World. Um, that only got to pilot. I'm kind of glad I'm not in TV anymore. It's very uh, <laughs> it's incredibly creative, but a lot of frustration, especially when you're like the creator of this stuff. This was the same show. These were the bad guys. These were the lobstery. Um, crustaceans with a K, they were called. And we had like an animatronic sea and enemy running around there. You can see on the bottom on the bottom right. Uh fun stuff to make there. And this was a series, this this ran for four years on Nickelodeon. It was a little series called Life with Loopy. I, it was stop motion animation. Again, I'm not going to get into the details on this unless anyone's really interested. But it, it, this show was um, you know, it was a girl character who was the hero. And she had sort of fantastical adventures in crazy worlds, including this one, which had a giant squid puppet. All these are pretty, these are live puppets, very elaborately made out of rubbers and plastics and stuff like that. But I loved going into, you know, bringing in underwater stuff whenever I could when I was working in that medium. And kind of all the way through this, I was painting. Um, painting, I went to art school in London when I, you know, when I, uh, before I came to America. And I, at that point, I was a painter. So I, painting has always been to me the root of all of this, whether I'm doing TV or theater or whatever. Painting is my sort of chief love, I guess. And, and you know, coming up with images that resonate and uh, is it, to me is, you know, the, the most satisfying thing. And it's kind of like a, you know, it's a sort of, um, you, you don't need tons of people to do it. It's just you and the, and the white canvas until you turn it into something. And I think I've always loved that challenge of, you know, what trying to get something out of your brain and onto the canvas, this image that you see. So this was an earlier painting. Um, this is the kind of stuff I was doing about 10, 15 years ago. This one's called Children of the Forest. Um, and as you can see, it's sort of it's definitely about nature and children, which is a sort of themes that I've worked with a lot in my uh, in my art. Um, I was also doing again this. You can see this. So this is I was I, I I love mythology. That's always been an inspiration to me. This is um, from the Odyssey. This is the sea nymph Calypso in the cave with uh, um, Odysseus when he's on his Odyssey and. Uh, it was a, a nice excuse to paint a sea cave. And Stephen, just to let you know, Kaz yeah. has made it in. Oh, congratulations, well. Kaz! Hi, Kaz. <laughs> um. So yeah, this was oh, this is another mythology one. This is um, a kind of like a modern, slightly modern take on Orpheus, who would play his instrument to charm the the, the animals. And this is set in down, downtown LA in the background, the view from Elysian Park. And then I then I really started getting into animals. So in more recent years, I've started doing I, this is uh, pet portraiture, which I've you know some of my money I come my living comes from doing pet portraits actually. So I started getting more and more into simply painting animals. Um, I used to do this when I was a kid. I, I mean, Ken mentioned in his his write up about me. I used to, uh, you know, take books out of the library on animals and especially fish, and just do you know obsessively, especially low. I mean, hundreds of pictures of fish copied from you know books from those days. And I think now I'm doing animals again. It's a sort of I'm sort of uh, coming full circle to a certain extent. So uh, I love color too. You know the idea of of uh, doing realistic animals, but introducing 
much more vivid colors than you know especially this one as you can see this one looks more like a sea creature than a dog i think but uh getting across the personality of the animal and um at the same time having fun with the color and the look of everything if you look at my paintings i do not use black paint at all ever i don't even use it to mix with other colors so it's a way of kind of for me i've figured out that it kind of keeps the colors very vivid when you when you're not actually mixing in black black is a very strong color but uh it sort of it it dulls things to a certain extent so i like doing sheer color mixed together um so getting closer to the underwater stuff this is a painting called in the heart of the woods that i did and the, this was the first one in a series of three. The first one was these children, kind of fantastical, you know, the idea being that they ran into the woods at night and turned into birds and flew off into the trees. Um, and I wanted to do a second one with children diving under the ocean and turning into uh, seals and sea lions. So I did this one, and because I was living in California, I wanted to make it, uh, you know, local. I wanted to do a kelp forest. And um, at this point, I definitely, I'd learned to dive and was experiencing this for real. You know, I knew how beautiful these places were. Um, and so I painted this one, and I was, you know, pretty happy with it. And I, I, mean, I was really intrigued. I think the thing to capture with kelp forest is the light, you know. I mean, for all of us who've been down in those places, they are so magical and it's so much to do with the light, you know, like how it, it, it filters through the help fronds and how some bits are dark and then some bits are really light. And it's, it's just uh, the magic comes from that as much as anything else. And the shifting light, you know, different and the depth and the difference lights and the different depths and so forth. So I was trying to capture that in this one. And after I painted this one, I was so it started to get me going on feeling like, wait a minute, you know, I need to I, I dive. I love diving. I love painting. So why not really get serious about putting these together? So this is the first sort of, I, I would say this is the sort of first realistic or fairly realistic dive painting I did. And this is a big one. It's, um, this one's, it's gone now, but it was about, uh, you know, four by three feet. I, I sold this one, but um, it's big. It's a, you know, big vertical painting. And really this one, what I wanted to do, I, I, I do a lot of my diving from the, the beach, you know, and I'm a member of Soul Searchers Dive Club and Soul Searchers does a lot of beach dives down in Laguna, which I really enjoy doing. I love the fact that you can just walk straight off the beach and you're in this other world. This, I think, Ken, is the one that I did a, I, I did a limited print of this for the Chamber Day last year, right? I think this was the one. Um, so this one I was really trying to capture the experience of California beach diving. You know, this isn't anywhere else in the world. It's got the, you know, it's what it looks like down in Laguna. It, it's sort of, you know, that little way off of the beach and then what you see when you go down. But it but put together into one painting, which is why I wanted to do the vertical format. <coughs> um, and a little, you know, a taste of what you see when you're down there. Um, this is sort of a self-portrait. And a, a little bit, I've started to go um, into the ocean with my teenage son right now. So it's a, it's, um, you know, it's a little bit of him as well. He's just starting to going to start to learn to dive this summer. Um, but we've been snorkeling a lot together. Uh, and I really wanted to capture, you know, California diving is about, you know, as, as much as the beauty, it's also the cold, um, the currents, the you know, the difficulties of California diving is is something I, I'm really interested in capturing. Not just this sort of perfect world underwater, but something that kind of gives you the sense that this is a you know it's slightly dangerous and a little mysterious, and uh, the visibility isn't perfect. You know, that's a close up of that. Um, I did this one as a portrait of uh, this is I don't know if any of you know this guy is Bill Powers who runs a he's an instructor who's down in La Jolla and um, he commissioned me to do a portrait of himself underwater showing you know typical La Jolla 
life, which isn't too different from here, but has a few extra bonuses. So I did that one. Um, doing a portrait of a diver, <laughs> you realize after I started this, it's like, you know, you haven't got much to work with because as long as you've got the body type basically right, your, your portrait is really all about this, you know, what you can see through the, the, uh, the dive mask. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's not like you can really easily capture a likeness when you've only got that much limited space to work with as far as, you know, getting someone looking like someone. But uh, he was happy with it. Um, yeah, kelp bass. So I'm, I'm, I guess what I'm interested in with these paintings, what excites me about it is it's very much to do with the light. It's, you know, uh, I think it's... The questions that come up when you're painting realistic underwater scenes are, what light do you use? You know, on the surface, we 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 know the colors of things because of sunlight and you know the time of day or whatever. Underwater, I mean, a lot of I've, and I've looked at a lot of under other you know painters and illustrators who do underwater scenes. Very often, the, those scenes are painted as if you know with the colors and the brightness and the clarity that you would see on the surface. So, and I don't really want to necessarily do that. I want to sort of try and capture the light conditions that are down there. But on the other hand, you know, when you're taking photographs down there, you're lighting everything up with a strobe. So the sort of the moral question to me as a painter is, do I give things the colors that you see when you're lighting them up with a strobe? Or do I do it with, you know, as if you were seeing things without a strobe? And, you know, what is color? What is reality down there? because it's very much dependent on the lighting. So, yeah, these are the things I'm thinking about at the moment. And in a way, this is why, you know, I, I feel like I'm beginning this, because painting underwater scenes is such a gigantic thing to get into that I think I'm going to sort of change my ideas about how I'm going to do this as I keep going on this. So this is a cabazon. I do... Excuse my cough, I'm a little hoarse today. Um, I do use photography. You know, I take photos down there myself. I occasionally have been, I've been, I started off using imagery on the internet and then I'm started to realize more and more that I really should use only photographic, photographic imagery that I've taken myself. It sort of feels like cheating a little to be using other photographs from other people, except for reference, you know, but uh but this was a, you know, based on a photograph I took myself of a cabazon. This was in Monterey, guarding its eggs. This is a male cabazon. And this one definitely, with, the photograph was taken with a strobe. So you can kind of see it is lit up as if you're seeing it with a strobe lighting to it. So again, you know, I think it works for this, but um, it is that question again. Um, all of this stuff now is really pretty recent, all in the last few months. I've been doing a lot of painting recently because of the scuba show. Um, I've been getting ready for my booth there, um, which I've never, so I've never done that before as far as, uh, I haven't really, I mean, I had an exhibition at Zen Dive last summer and I'm gonna have another one this summer, but I haven't really shown these a lot. This is all my sort of, you know, sort of putting all of this uh, effort into underwater paintings has really been, it's been increasing in the last two or three years, but right now it's all I'm doing. Nudibranchs are incredible. They're so, you know, they're just these absolutely surreal and beautiful objects to paint. They're like painting jewelry or something like that. So uh, it's the rhythm, I think. I think all living creatures, whether it's fur you're painting on a dog or a cat or or you know a fish's fins or a nudibranch's tendrils whatever these things are it's the i i love the rhythm the the movement that is in all living things whether it's a leaf or anything you know this rhythm that goes through nature that's the one from uh that was in the raffle right the auction at the recent chamber event yes correct yeah spanish shore this one was hard to get the colors, I must say. It's hard. The original painting, the colors were pretty good and true, but I used a, this is, I don't think I'm going to necessarily do this again because they're hard to photograph. I used a little bit of neon color in this to pull out the pinks and it doesn't photograph well. So uh, 
This, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that one. These are insane. I love, you know, the shapes of underwater creatures and the um, beautiful things. Nothing new to break. Melody, I don't know if that's the, how you pronounce the melodies, but uh, they are particularly incredible. So this is also, I've been experimenting with these. So th this is not a painting. This is, a, I used artist pastels. And the background is uh, marbled paper. So what I'm doing with these, and I'll I'll show you a few of these, like I'll just give you a quick, all of this, the next few pictures I'm going to show you are all pastel on marbled paper, and they're quite large. Um, marbled paper, I, I sometimes paint on wood too, because the wood grain and the marbling in marble, you know, marbled paper is basically a, a, a bookmaker's thing. You know, the marbled paper is mostly made for book binding um but it is it is it's the random swirls in marbled paper that have a feeling that reminds me of water in the same way you know that kelp or you know just just the the movement of the water things in the water have that same random rhythmic quality that you see in the marbled paper so i've been doing these things that the of creatures that i kind of may I, I look at the paper for a while and see shapes into the marbling um, and then work the, the the shapes of the creature itself into those rhythms so the the shapes here of the tentacles are following the same lines and shapes of the marbling that just happen, happen to be in that paper that's what i called this is the first one i did like this it's called uh, i call it ghost octopus that's not a real octopus. That's just, I just wanted to do a ghost of an octopus. <laughs> but uh, I, these days, I'm a, these earlier ones were a little more bizarre looking. But I, again, I was following the the, the rhythms and the, the random swirls and the, the marbled paper here. Same with that one. California, two spot. So these are, you know, photographs of the originals, but then I'm making prints of them too, so that uh, which turn out really nicely actually. Oh, and that's what I mean. Some of the stuff I'm selling at the, the scuba show will be prints of these. I some of my greatest. I love again. I. I dive california a lot monterey and down here but i've also gone up in san juan islands and up in nanaimo and you know uh, british columbia up there a little bit i, I love it up there too I, i've seen the the giant pacific octopuses up there and uh, incredible love it up there This one is I've named it Deimatic Two Spot. Apparently, Deimatic is is that um, creatures who make themselves look more octopuses will do this. I, I was looking at this online and reading stuff about it. They will, you know, make themselves look more uh, threatening than they really are. Occasionally, I mean, octopuses are kind of a, I love they're they're amazing to draw and, and paint. They are their their shapes and their Twists and turns are just, um, I love it, really. And the colors, too. So they really work well with this marble paper technique. They, but that's what diamatic means. It means that sort of, uh, you know, threatening posture. Jellyfish also work well like in this technique, I think. Again, these are pretty big. These are... Um, mm, three feet by two feet, something like that. These are all very recent in the last couple of months. Never seen one of these, but I would like to. So that's a, this is a case of like, this one's on wood. So this is shows you the difference as far as you know different techniques, same creature, different medium. 
So this is pastel on marbled paper. This one's actually quite a lot smaller and it's acrylic paint on wood. <clears throat> So this one, I decided I wanted to do, I'd, I'd sold already that other, that was called Between Two Worlds, the, the one of beach diving in Laguna that I showed you. This one looks very similar to that, but it's a different painting. Um, I wanted to do, I'd you know, so many dives at Casino Point, and I just wanted to use the same format, but capture the sort of experience of what it's like in Casino Point. <clears throat> I kind of had in mind one of those travel posters from the 1930s, 1940s, you know, the train posters where you're like, you know, visit Yosemite or something like that. I kind of wanted to do one that had that sort of feel to it with bright colors. And uh, that's why the clouds are yellow, because <laughs> a lot of those posters, those train posters, they really push the colors, you know, the, these insane sunsets and super bright colors. I'm, I'm kind of influenced by them, actually. So I wanted to do a casino point painting that had a similar kind of feel to it. It's interesting trying to convey depth, I think, too. You know, this vertical format, um, you know, and clearly, you know, you've got to kind of get all of the depth in there or some sense that it goes deeper, too, because the reality is you're only sort of seeing 10 feet below water here. But, you know, it's the it's the... It's how you manipulate the shapes underwater, I guess. The GSBs are a little too high up, I know, they're deeper, but uh, I cheated. There they are. So this is another huge painting. I'm gonna, uh, again, bring these along to the, the scuba show. So you, if you're interested, you come find my booth and you can see these for real. This is another big one. Um, this one I've called Father and Son. This is, uh, it's it's based on a, a couple of photographs. I'm gonna actually show you later the uh, the photographs that, these, you know, some of them are really heavily based on photographs. And this is two photographs combined. Um, the, what is that? Oh my God! What's the fish called? It's um, it's a scorpion fish. Scorpion fish. So this was uh, and it was a dive I did off of at some point with Soul Searchers. We were off of uh, Present Beach, one of the one of the ones, or Heisler, something around there. And um, I'd seen this sort of you know scorpion fish on a little hummock like this, and I sort of it was a great image. I took a photo of it, and then realized later that this would be a great composition for a painting. Only. I wanted to put uh, divers in. Now, the other thing I'm really interested in too is, is actually kind of incorporating dive culture into the paintings too. Like sometimes I am just painting the creature on its own, but I do all, a lot of underwater painters I've noticed sort of isolate the fish almost as if it's a stuffed fish. You know, it's against white and it's, um, it's kind of like it's out of its environment. I definitely like the idea of painting fish in the environment. And I also like the idea of, you know, divers. The, I mean, I, I think part of the fascination of the underwater world is that, you know, we're down there. It's not just like you're seeing photographs of fish. We're experiencing that. We're, you know, as human beings. So the the part of the magic, I think, is the fact that, you know, we, we're not necessarily supposed to be in this environment, and yet we've managed to do it, and we're uh, seeing it through human eyes. So include, including divers in the paintings, I think to me is, you know, as much as possible anyway, is, is a really interesting and important thing to do. This, um, the two divers here are Lars and his son, um, who I dive with with soul searchers, Lars Dennett. Um, and they were, I kind of just like the idea that this, you know, to call this painting, even though they're sort of in the background, um, that it was very much about them, even though you're looking at the fish and the beauty of the fish and the you know the environment itself. It's that it's uh, it's a relationship between a father and a son diving together. So I, that's why I call it this. This one is another pretty huge one. It's about four feet wide. This painting because it's a giant sea bass. How can you do a tiny picture of a giant sea bass? It's impossible. So I had to do this big. Just about got it on and. Um, yeah, 
that's it's just you know it's this is definitely casino point too i mean my only experiences with giant sea bass have been in casino point but that that is just a peak experience of going down and coming face to face with one of those things i'd done a i know you're not supposed to but i've done a solo dive there where i was down there floating around taking photographs and just came across a huge one on my own and just hung out with it on my own for I think it was you know like 10 it felt forever but it was about 10 you know maybe 10 minutes of just you know and it didn't go anywhere and I didn't go anywhere and I just sat and watched it and I'd actually my batteries ran out on my camera almost immediately so um I just had to do a painting instead <laughs> But uh, that experience of just being with one of those creatures, and there was there was no other divers around as well. It was it was that was pretty special. It's pretty amazing. So I wanted to try and capture that feeling. So this is the original Lars and his son photograph that I took. So you can see how that I basically incorporated into that one in the background. And that was pretty literally taken from the photograph. I just sort of loved their position and their connection with each other. So I did that. But you know, again, it's that's that's the all there was in the photo. So I wanted more to it. So I incorporated other stuff. And that's what I incorporated. That was the original of the scorpion fish. So that is again, you know, really putting two different photos together and then sort of adding a bit of painterly magic, I guess. But uh there you go. The thing about painting is, you know, it's it's different from pho photo underwater photography is obviously its own art form completely. But when you're, um, I mean, maybe a good way of showing it, trying to, try to explain what I'm about to say is if I go to that, that is a really terrible photograph <laughs> I took of a giant black sea bass years ago at casino point uh, when i had a it was like an old film camera when i had uh, like a pretty bad old film camera and <clears throat> yeah the lighting's terrible there's tons of, of, of mess in the water you know not good but what i did love from that was the composition i loved its um you know the the kelp sweeping behind it the, the way that and there was no diver in the picture but I, I basically took the, the layout, the composition, and the, the sense of hugeness of that fish. But because I'm painting it, I don't have to worry about how bad the, the photograph is. I can make it perfect again. You know, I can I can use the my my you know painterly eye to make it what I want. I wish this could be. <laughs> so I kind of use you know photography in different ways. And so much of it again is the color you know getting photography helps me see what it's really like down there and it doesn't matter if the picture is not that great sometimes it's just capturing one aspect of a scene it doesn't have to be a, and you know how light hits kelp at the surface is obviously a whole different thing than what it looks like deep down so just you know sort of collecting all of this information on photographs really helps with the paintings Um, and again, I think I threw this in for the same reason. It's not like the greatest photo, but it's great information. The, the textures, the, the you know, the, the the contrast of the textures of these different kinds of underwater seaweeds um, is just so beautiful. I love the, you know, it's, there's just not an inch down there that doesn't have something growing on it or something alive in it. And I want to do more paintings of diver situations you know the i i kind of like uh safety stops <laughs> when everyone has to sort of like you know i've been in so many of those safety stops where you're like you know 15 feet from the surface and everyone's just hanging out and you kind of like you know you're sort of thinking about your dive you're looking at each other you're looking at your gauges but that sort of strange moment where you're just waiting at that is is a sort of a thing you know it's a only divers would know what it's like to do that, but I sort of um, I like those moments, and I, you know I think that's I haven't painted a, a safety stop yet, but I want to. I mean, so that's on my bucket list to paint. And that one I painted two days ago. This is my last picture. Um, it's a baby giant sea bass, and it's only six inches wide because you know you can't paint baby giant sea bass on huge paintings. So I did a, a tiny one. 
So I thought I'd throw that in for fun at the end. And I think that's it. Is that enough? You guys should ask me questions. <laughs> All right. Ken, I'm going to stop. Will. Yeah, stop the, share. stop the share. Stop the share. Okay. And then I'm going to bring us back that way. So for a moment, we can see everybody. So first, we start with the traditional Glenn starting it, the Reef Seekers applause. Uh, we'll do a QA. and uh, I get the first Q. Uh, and then we'll do a bunch of A's and other Qs. Um, so, Stephen, I noticed you said you don't ever use black in your paintings. Right. Yet you're wearing a black sweater tonight. Yeah, well, yeah, I, d that, I don't follow my own rules. That's right. that's, that's my first rule. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just checking. Um, some of the questions, uh, and then we'll, we'll take whatever questions we got from, from the gallery here. Um, but questions in the chat thing, I don't know if you've been looking at that or not, but a couple of people asked, Will you? Here's your commercial. Will you be selling your paintings at the Scuba Show? Yes, I will. Thank you for asking. Um, okay, yeah, here's the uh, the cell. It's uh, booth number three four five, and yes, I'm going to be bringing original paintings. Here, I'll give you. A, here, I brought. I got a couple beside me just to show you what a print looks like. So I'll be. I'm bringing originals, but then I sell these prints. So that's what the prints look like. And, and how how big is that one roughly? This one is 16 by 20 inches, but I also have smaller ones at different sizes, different price ranges. Um, so I've got a, and I, I've also, I make prints on wood as well. This is that little one, by the way, that's, that's how big that one is. It's small. And can you go ahead and give them the pricing on those as well? Yeah. The, the, the big prints go for 80, $80. They're all like, you know, really high quality paper and signed limited editions. Um, the the very large paintings are more like a you know couple of thousand. They're, they're a big thing, you know. I mentioned to you. I get a commission on all the sales that come out of this, right? Oh uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll work that. We'll work that out. <laughs> we'll work that out later. All no, good. But little, little prints go down. You know, the cheapest thing you can buy from me is probably about uh, ten fifteen dollars for a really small one. Well, and how much is the small the small giant sea bass? This one is a yeah. uh, one hundred dollars for an original. That's a that's cool. a buy. Yeah. All right. So, Susie, you you can determine what wall space you have and what you have in your budget, and you can clean out clean out his booth. What go. kind of questions we got for him? There was a question, but I think you sort of answered. It. Laura wanted to know what your mediums were. Laura, did did he sort of answer the question in the throughout the talk? Um, pretty much. I'd asked that just before he started talking about the pastels uh, on the um, paper. Uh, but I was wondering, uh, do you mostly use acrylic on the yeah. others? Yeah, they, I, I, I've always used acrylic. I'm just, I'm we're so familiar with it these days. And I, um, oil just doesn't quite work for me. You know, I like the fact that acrylic dries quickly so I can do layers on it and I can add things to it quite quickly. So it's all acrylic. I either on canvas or um, on wood is the two different things I use. But everything else is pastel. Yeah. Great. Thanks. On the limited print, what is the number usually that you run? It's usually, it, de it depends. It's either 50 or 100 It's is what I go to. Okay. Thank you. These ones are, yeah, these ones I just showed you are 100 And I've got some that are only 50 So yeah, yeah. And do you keep the number once? <laughs> I, I, you know, I, no, I don't actually, because there's always someone who wants one. And I always feel like, all right, if you, if you are in, really into number ones, then yeah, you know, I, I usually let it go. Yes. Yes. So Jorge, and, and by the way, there's a head growing out of your head. Um, That's my better head. Yeah, there you go. Your better <laughs> head. I was going to say, you could buy all his prints and then you, you can determine the value and then the market value will go up because they'll be less available. And then right. I can sell them back to you. Yeah, you, oh, absolutely. With all the commission I'm going to make from him, are you kidding me? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to hire you as my manager, I think. There we go. He, he, he there didn't mention, but I, we did commission him to paint our dogs. Oh, cool. Right. Very cool. Beautiful yeah. job. Very cool. What other questions we got? Okay. Anna? Could I, it's Anna. Could I ask a question? You you may. All right. Thank you, Ken. You're welcome. So, um, I'm oh, wait a minute. That my... was your question. Can I ask yeah. a question? <laughs> Who's next? 
Yeah, there we go. My next question is go ahead. Um, so, so I really enjoyed your presentation. I was, I am an artist myself. I was just teaching an art class, uh, of, an, an evening virtual class night, which is why I couldn't see the be beginning of it. But um, I was very interested. My husband said, "You must see this guy because I'm an artist and a scuba diver, just like you." And it's a kind of, you know, it's a rare mix, right? Right. And it is. Uh, so my question is. Um, do you ever have other artists come and do like a tutorial or a class or, you know, come by your studio and maybe, you know, sort of work like I would love because I don't incorporate scuba diving into my artwork and I, I would like to try You've inspired me. So what would is there a mechanism to make that happen maybe sometime later this year? Uh, to have other people like, like you, for example, to come to my studio and, and work there with me. Yeah, yeah, I could bring a painting. Yeah, yeah. I know we're about to go on a dive trip, and so I could take some pictures, and yeah. I could think, okay, it's enough of your work. So it's, you think, I understand being an artist, you know, I, I, and I do acrylic work too, so yeah. I understand what you're doing. Um, I'm really inspired by it. Like, I could bring some photographs, and it just get me started, and, you know, I could pay you something for your time, or... You know, or no, I no. could work as a slave labor for you. I could prep <laughs> some canvases for you instead. I, I, I smell I smell a workshop. They're commissionable <laughs> too. Just, workshop. They're commissionable uh, as well. Well it does sound uh, like a, it, it does sound like a workshop. And I, I would totally be into that actually. That really I never okay. thought about that, but it would be really fun. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think so. Don't you think? Yeah, I would enjoy it. Where where exactly do you live? I live in Alhambra and I have a studio in my my backyard garage. Half of it's been converted into a studio. So uh, that's where I am, just south of Pasadena. Okay, fabulous. Well, we can work out the details later. We're about to go to Monado. So I will take some photos or, you know, we don't have fancy cameras, but like you said, it doesn't matter because you're uh -huh. interpreting it. Yeah. Yeah. But I will keep a, a, a painting in mind when I'm in Monado. So thank you. Great. Absolutely. Yeah. That would be really fun. Yeah. Uh, email me or i'll get you my information or something yes great perfect as a side note you're doing you guys are doing murex yeah no yeah. okay just just checking just checking cool. uh kaz i'm gonna have you ask the question you posted in the chat and oh, make okay. you do it live yeah yeah i was just wondering like do you have plans to address like tropical marine environments in the future because i know like you know Southern California marine life is great. I love it. But, you know, just wondering, like, do you have a desire to, I don't know, tackle the tropical kind of right. looking stuff it's, too? Um, I, yeah, I don't, I, I got to say that there is, I don't know what it is. And I think it may be because I grew up in cold, you know, I mean, again, in England, it's, it's just, you know, the ocean is cold and uh inhospitable and kind of you know it's it, and there's a challenge to the whole thing and there's something that i really appeals to me and i don't know even if it's just um masochism or what <laughs> but i like california diving so i definitely feel like that's what inspires me however it's not like i'm you know like i think tropical would be really fun too and depends on where you know what kind of things and what places but uh um i would say yeah but I also find it kind of unique dealing with the California, especially, you know, especially kelp forest. It's like, it's so mm -hmm. not a very common thing around the world to find these sort of underwater forests. And I think that the lighting with because of the kelp is something that really speaks to me, you know, but having said that, then no, you know, tropical would be really fun too. So yeah. I'd love yeah. to. I mean, I mean, I totally agree. I mean, I don't, different tropical places but what we have here is so unique and yeah, just yeah. wonderful so yeah i totally see your point yeah yeah but it's all good it's all so cool it's so uh yeah and yeah. Stephen, if you want to do tropical stuff i will mention i do still have spots on my maldives trip in uh, november not that you know that's not commissionable to anybody except me <laughs> just to be just to be clear okay good all right any any other questions glenn uh, do you have, do you paint for uh, any particular audience per se or? Um, with the underwater stuff? Uh, it's, it, I wouldn't say, I mean, because, you know, this, uh, the underwater stuff is going to appeal to divers, I think. But at the same time, I think that fish 
I think it's, you know, I've got to say, I feel like I'm kind of excited about the underwater stuff because I feel like it's an art world niche that has not really been very much explored. So, you know, you've got your, you know, the, the fa there's a few famous underwater painters and, um, but not many, and not many have really, uh, again, I kind of keep looking at these images that are usually painted so perfectly that they could have been painted of, of a surface, you know, like, you know, animals on the surface because the lighting is so perfect. So I, I, I feel like as, as far as audiences go, I think it's going to be anyone who's sort of fascinated with the ocean, which I think is, a, you know, a huge amount of people. So even though it's a diet, you know, I mean, this thing I'm going to do next month is the scuba show, which will be basically an almost 100% diver audience. Um, I, I'm excited to see what audiences this kind of stuff can reach, because I do feel like people haven't quite seen this before. You know, it's 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 a... Uh, there's a lot of, you know, surface landscape painters, but underwater landscape painters, I don't know. I, I, there's not too many of them, it seems. And I imagine divers in particular would appreciate light and lighting. Right, right, right. Because we're, we're dealing with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, no, I was wondering whether you had, you used pictures uh, for the basis of your paintings, you saw, uh, in, a, in a way you kind of have to because, well, I tell you what it is is I think that because I'm I am a diver and I you know I want to paint the emotional experience of being down there as much as I want to paint. Phot photography can capture what things look like, you know, and, and great photographs can you know you know can, but i think i you know it's this age old conversation between you know what's the difference between photography and painting and is is painting relevant after photography you know when cameras were invented painters were threw up their hands in horror and thought their careers were over you know um i think there is a difference and when you're a, as a painter i feel like i'm trying to capture the emotional feeling of being down there as much as i am what i see you know so um Sorry, what was your, uh, you were, oh, yeah. and the <laughs> other thing was, you're the perfect example of making um, a picture into a painting. Okay, right. Yeah. right. Right? Yes. You know, com uh, combining two, um, right. two pictures and maybe not so good, but you get, unless I, I suppose you were an expert at like, ichthyology, you know, fish, you wouldn't be able to remember what they look like. Exactly. Because, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. what I was trying to remember. You asked me. Yeah, that's why you kind of need photography. You know, you sort of, you, what are you going to do? You're going to kind of paint a, you know, a Garibaldi. It's kind of orange blobby thing, you know. <laughs> right. uh, you kind of need the photographs for reference, but you can go further than the photograph, I think. Yeah. No, I, I think you need the photograph, Stephen, because um, it it shows you everything else because you're you're painting the currents, you're painting the depth perception. And unless you have the photograph, I mean, you can if you're going to paint clouds, you can go out and sit on the mountaintop for hours and do that. But you're only down there for, yeah. you know, 45 minutes. And yeah. as you say, you, you have to. And I think your sea bass, you got exactly the the flow of the water, the way the kelp is. And you had to have that to come back and paint what you did. You know, and and that casino point one, yes, you've got everything squashed down, but you also see that chasm. You you get the depths going away to the background, and I think if you didn't have some photographs to look at, I don't think your mind, our mind, would be able to carry all that. Right, right. You know? exactly. But you, as a painter, then you can look at the photograph and put it into everything because yeah. Yeah. I think you'd have to have a pic. You'd have to have a photography. You know, you'd have to, but you yeah. do such a great job of taking that photograph and putting it all in there because I can see the depth, I can see the direction of the current, I can see the light, I can, you know, it all, it's all in there just from one fo bad photograph, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Good. Yeah, that's, that's, I think you're right. I think that's it. See, the way I, I'm thinking of it is to me, the, the painting is the ultimate Photoshop. So you took this crappy picture. And you made it in this gorgeous picture. Yeah. It takes a little longer than it does in Photoshop, but 
But no, that is, I, I, I've been thinking about that as I've been doing these. It, it sort of is like that. Yeah, it's a sort of, it's perfecting, but it, it's perfecting in an, in an emotional way as well as just a sort of, you know, lighting and focus and all of that sort of stuff. It's a sort of, it gives it an extra oomph in some way as well. Yeah. So yeah, like you say, ultimate Photoshop. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I, I love that you uh, are also putting in some of the dive culture in there. I, I love the I just the, the fact that you mentioned the idea of on your list of things to do is to do a safety stop. I, I think, you know, those kind of things just, you know, uh, um, uh, just I think it's just fantastic just to have that uh, it really does uh, add to the whole character of everything. <clears throat> Thank you. I also want to do. I, I love uh, the 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 Avalon cleanup. The, the the atmosphere there of all the divers coming together and pulling up trash. That's another bucket list thing. I think I'd love to do as well. You know, like a, a big painting of a scene from the cleanup <laughs> would also be fun. I think. Well, we got we got another one of those cleanups coming, February twenty yeah. second, two thousand twenty four. I'm just just saying it will happen again. Any other questions? Yeah, I got. I, I have one, Ken. All right, Alan. Uh, Alan. Alan. So, um, well, first of all, thank you for sharing. You know, your beautiful artwork uh, with us. It's really inspiring to see, and it's certainly inspiring my wife. So, uh, thank you. I, you know, you, you talk about a couple of things. You talk about having dreams of fish underwater as a child, and then you present your artwork with kind of a left brain, right brain approach. You know, the uh, logical thought part connecting even to scuba itself with the right brain creative artistic view and it reminds me of and if you haven't heard of this book i'll, I'll commend it to you a, a book called the blue mind by an author uh wallace nichols and this i i, I had to look it up because i'm not going to do it justice and the subtitle is the surprising science that shows how being near in on or underwater to make you happier, healthier, more connected, and better at what you do. Wow. And I, I hadn't thought about that book for quite some time until I heard you present your experiences from childhood through the other day, making you know the the, the uh, baby giant sea bass. You know, it's just a uh, beautiful integration of all those things. It's not really a question as much as a comment and a, a recommendation and an expression of appreciation. That's very cool. Thanks. Thank you. And I'll look for the book. That book sounds great. Yeah. Can I just uh, say with that? Um, so um, as, as an artist, one of the things that I like to do the most is go paint at workshops at a place called Esalen Institute, which is up by Big Sur, Northern California. You might have heard of it. It's a very well aged, it's very old and it's been there forever. You can take art classes up there. Um, I go up there every year I can. Alan has never been, wasn't particularly interested because it's kind of, I don't know, new, not his thing. Anyway, um, but this guy who wrote The Blue Mind, this Nichols guy, presented a weekend workshop on the blue mind on the idea that people are happier when they're when water is in their life or you know it's a simplified statement but you know what i mean and mm -hmm. um so we i thought well that's kind of an obscure topic so alan went with me for the first time we, we did a weekend workshop in Esalen. i thought it would be a small workshop because it seems like an obscure topic the place was packed it was like it was one of the biggest workshops i've seen there i was just shocked anyway he um he had so it was I was not really metaphysical it was more psychological spiritual it's kind of the emotional world that an artist like you is trying to capture like Alan is trying to say I was trying to just say it more yeah more I don't know from my viewpoint um but uh to add on to what he was saying but I would tell you it was so this book is more than just an interesting read it's something that penetrates the psychological emotional reward that we get as divers like what is that world it's not just seeing fish and recognizing fish it's all interesting stuff it's beautiful but there's something that you can't put words on that it's you know emotional spiritual psychological whatever it's, it's the awe and wonder that there's a whole world that we get to witness like you said with you know you always try to capture 
the divers down there, not just the fish, but the divers. Anyway, so this guy, this Nichols, and one thing I'll I'll end with this because I don't want to ramble too much longer, but uh, he had hundreds of people at his workshop. One of the things that he did was he gave everybody a blue marble. Somehow in his book and his, his metaphysical stuff, somehow the sphere, the universe, the marble had meant something to him. He actually passed out a blue marble to everybody and said, you know, use this almost as a talisman to remind yourself of the blue, what is it called? The blue mind. And it was an amazing thing. I kept that marble for a long time. Right. Here's and, the marble. Uh, but yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful experience altogether. Wow. Wow. So now, Stephen, you'll need to paint blue marbles into your okay. hide, them in, <laughs> hide them in the pictures. They'll become the new Easter can you, eggs. Can you guys see this? Yeah. I'm holding up I'm holding up that blue marble that they passed out. Oh, there we go. <laughs> did you go to that workshop? I did not, but I saw Stacey, the exhibit oh, on Yeah, it. there we go. Yeah. It's amazing. Now that did you were there. My, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And where did you get that, Stacy? Uh, it blew mine. Oh, I, you know, I didn't go to the workshop at Esalen, although I live in the area. I don't know if it was like at a bookstore or something that I came across. I think they were selling the book and they had these marbles or, you know. Wow. I came across yeah. it and I have it front and center. Yeah. So thank you for so reminding cool. me of that. Yeah. Here it is. That Woo. is so cool. I'm glad you <laughs> showed it. <laughs> <laughs> I well, love it. And on that thank note, you. that's the It's a Small World that we live in and everything somehow is interconnected and there we go. Yeah. Stephen, thank you very much for sharing your You're thoughts. Welcome. Once again, the Zoom seekers, thank you. Uh, next month, we continue in our artsy fartsy mode. Um, and our speaker is, is one of my divers, Victor Dueb, who is a sculptor. And uh, he does a lot of large animal sculpting, uh, sharks and rays and stuff like that. So um, he's also never done a Zoom talk before. So I have to help him put it together. I have to remind him that he's speaking and help him put it together. Yeah. So it'll be uh, it'll be fun. And that'll be uh, next, uh, what is that? June, June 13th. So always the second Tuesday in June, I will try not to make the thing uh, um, passcode dependent uh, next time, uh, but we'll, we'll work it all out. So again, Stephen, thank you very much. Remember, he's going to be at the Scuba Show. Scuba Show is June 3rd and 4th at the Convention Center in Long Beach. He'll be there both days. As a side note, I'll be speaking both days. I'm not sure what time, but I will put in the pitch for our Saturday afternoon seminar, four o'clock in one of the big rooms, and that is the Why Divers Die with the coroner and the chamber, and we talk about the actual fatalities from 2022 in hopes that uh, you will not become one of our subjects down the road. So a lot of stuff happening at the Scuba Show. We hope we'll see you there. Again, Stephen, thank you very much. Thank you June very much. June 13th and Victor for sculpting. And with that, I will bid you all a fond farewell. Thank you for joining us on Zoom Seekers. And once again, don't take it personally, but the only way to end this, I have to hit end meeting for all. So that's going to do it.